For as long as I can remember, I've been drawn to animals. I've never had a pet, but I've always wanted one. Shockingly, the one I want the most is a snake. <laughs> when I was in elementary school, I went to the zoo pretty much every weekend. I've ridden on elephants and horse-drawn carts and on dolphins. How many of you here are animal lovers? How many of you have taken photos with tigers? Elephants? Dolphins? Or any other wild animal? If so, you supported the animal ecotourism industry. Ecotourism is, according to Google's dictionary, tourism directed towards exotic, often threatened, natural environments intended to support conservation efforts and observe wildlife. It was made to educate us and use our love for animals to help them live better lives. One of the first occurrences of ecotourism was in 1901, when hikers first went to Sierra Nevada's backcountry to encourage people to help preserve the forest. Now, ecotourism is considered one of the fastest growing sectors in the travel industry, about 5% annually, and accounts for about 6% of the world's gross domestic product. The problem is that the industry has changed. And now when we spend our money on ecotourism, many of us are unknowingly fueling the suffering and demise of a lot of animals. The worst part is, they're using animal lovers, us, to torture and kill the animals we love. After reading a National Geographic article titled Suffering Unseen, The Dark Truth Behind Wildlife Tourism by Natasha Dolly, my perspective on ecotourism and the people who run the industry was changed forever. Now I realize that most of the places I've been to aren't humane. The people there don't care for the animals. They're exploiting them for financial gain. One of the most effective ways that ecotourist attractions acquire visitors is by using indirect social media advertising. When tourists take photos with animals and post on the social media platforms like Instagram or Twitter, others are encouraged to make a visit. Unfortunately, these pictures do not always depict the true cruelty that the animals are subjected to behind the scenes. Look at this tiger, for example. At first glance, everything seems fine, but then you notice the chains. On any given day, it only has five feet of space to move in in any direction. And when you have doubts, the caretakers are often highly trained to deflect probing questions about animal treatment with answers that divert your attention, confuse you, or are just blatant lies. For example, when I was about 10, my family and I went to a desert in Lay, India, where we stopped at a place that offered camel rides. I noticed that a lot of the camel's humps were flopped over, so I asked the person who had arranged our ride why they were like that. He said that after lunch, they'll be normal. I checked after lunch. Nothing had changed. I was disappointed, but not surprised. Camel's humps are where they store nutrition. So a flopped over hump usually indicates a malnourished camel. Now, if you're an animal lover, like me, and you want to experience the wild and see lots of animals, then you have two options. You can go on safaris and hope to see animals like leopards, rhinos, and dolphins, which may take several days. Or you can take photos with them, all in one day, at a place where you can hold and touch them. Which one would you do? Most people choose a second. It's quicker, easier, cheaper, and you can take awesome photos that you can then post on social media. Unfortunately, these attractions are often harmful to the animals that they involve. The animals are taken away from their natural habitats and forced to associate with humans. Sloths are one of the many animals affected by the ecotourism industry. They're adorable and like big teddy bears. Tourists love to cuddle and take pictures with them. But in order to supply sloths, they're taken away from their homes. 
And when handled by humans, their stress levels increase and they're unable to sleep their average 20 hours a day. Many people would argue that the salt's giving them a hug, and so it must like them, right? But sloths treat people like they're trees. They normally spend all day hanging on trees. They don't like being pawed, touched, and held by humans. The combination of stress and sleep deprivation causes them to have a shorter lifespan. The first time I rode on an elephant was when I was about five years old. I was excited to be so high off the ground on top of this massive, calm animal that I adored. Afterwards, I wanted to give him a hug and talk to him, but he was rushed off to give a ride to another tourist. I felt bad for the elephants because of the whips used on them. And as I learned more about ecotourism, I realized that the elephants were actually being tortured. And contrary to popular belief, elephants don't normally let humans ride on them. In India, elephants are taken from the wild, chained and taken to a training enclosure called a kraal, meant to break their mind, body, and spirit. It measures about 12 square feet, about the size of this red dot, and has just enough room for them to stand up in. They're kept inside the kraal in isolation until they become more docile. Once they're sufficiently compliant, they're then moved to the next phase of training alongside other elephants and when they don't obey, they're being severely using bull hooks, a wooden rod with a metal hook at the end. In a different, crueler method, the elephant's skin is slashed to make the ropes more painful, and nails hammered into the bottom of their feet teach them to lift up their legs. They're given verbal commands, and until they figure out what to do, they're punished. It's awful shocking, and sad. It's important to remember that ecotourism isn't all harmful and destructive. It often brings job opportunities and income for local residents, increasing the quality of life in those areas. Many economies are heavily dependent on ecotourism's revenue. It generates more than $28 billion of revenue for developing countries and is currently the fastest growing sector of tourism. A 2012 study in PLUS One stated that many parks agencies worldwide now rely heavily on tourism for routine operational funding, more than 50% in some cases. However, with all the economic prosperity that ecotourism brings, there are some significant negative consequences. A booming ecotourism industry puts pressure on areas to become more developed and attractive to tourists by building hotels and other attractions. However, these attractions can often be harmful to the surrounding environment and wildlife. The first time I saw the dolphins was when I was about four, in Mexico. I even saw a picture with a dolphin kissing my cheek and me riding on one. At the time, I loved the experience and I wanted to do it again and again and again. I didn't realize that the dolphins were being forced to live in an area much smaller than the vast waters that they're used to living in. The average age of a wild bottlenose dolphin is 40 years. Whereas in captivity, they live for mere five years. But when they die, the owners simply purchase or capture more and the abusive tourism continues. One of the best ways that we can change these animals' lives for the better is by boycotting inhumane places and supporting humane ones. However, even with the best of intentions, it can often be hard to differentiate between the two. So when looking for an ecotourist attraction, keep the following in mind. In a non-abusive place, animals should always have ready access to food and water or a natural means for acquiring them. They should have an abundance of space and should be able to move freely. That means no chains or cages. And finally, they should not be sick, in pain, or uncomfortable. They should be treated just as they would be treated in the wild. When researching about a place beforehand, 
look at the negative reviews because they generally include concerns about animal health and welfare. And if an attraction guarantees you the opportunity to interact with an animal, then the animal in question is probably chained, caged, or otherwise unnaturally confined. Out of all the ecotourism sites I've been to, one of the best ones is the Galapagos Islands. It's a national park protecting the islands and surrounding water where you're not allowed to go within six feet of an animal. I think that that's a great way to let us experience the animals in a natural, unharmful manner. Remember how earlier I mentioned that I wanted a pet snake? Now I know that I will never get one. Because if I do, I'm supporting the capturing and breeding of an animal that isn't meant to be domesticated. And if I do get an already domesticated animal, they'll be from a rescue center rather than a pet store, where it's likely that they breed or bought the animals there. How many of you learned something shocking about ecotourism today? Look around. The truth is, Many of us are oblivious to the currency of the industry. I, now that you're armed with this knowledge, I hope you use whatever influence you have to promote meaningful change. Since the tourism industry follows our demands, if we change, it will change. We can't change the whole world all at once. We can start small by educating our friends and family and encouraging them to be more mindful. I hope that next time you go to an ecotourism site, you keep in mind what you learned today and make a better decision for the animals that live in harmony with us. So remember, in 99.999% of cases, if an animal is there solely for your entertainment, then it has been abused. Don't contribute to its exploitation. Thank you.